Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a fundamental tutorial talking about objects following splines within geometry nodes. There are different methods. I'm going to discuss the pros and the cons for each of them and also discussing the presets I have for this kind of function for the moment. Also to warn you that the cover is a very special case. It uses a quite a different method which is not being actually covered within this tutorial. Although you may get some sort of idea, but I doubt. Anyway, so let's start. So here we in Blender. This is a pretty basic setup that I have a basic segment, which is very difficult to see. So for better visualization, I use a preset, which is bevel curve, which is essentially just a curve to mesh node. You can download them for free from the link in the description, but it's really simple. And it's not the point of this tutorial. It's a basically just for visualization, so you have some thickness of our spline. Uh, another thing we have is a cube. So my whole point is that I wanted this cube to follow this spline or this curve. There are generally two ways of doing. Uh, one is to use the sample curve node. The other is to use the endpoint selection method. Uh, generally speaking, I prefer this endpoint selection much better than this sample curve node. We will talk about all this kind of issue with this sample curve node, the pros and the cons for each method. Uh, we are also going to discuss the a preset which is called following splines. Okay. So uh, since we have a sem single segment, then we can use this sample curve node. This node is not good for multiple curves, just uh, to, to know. To use this node, you need a curve, so you just have a curve, and then you affect the positions, rotations of our cubes. So it's possible that the people think you set the position node, it's okay, but if you want to affect the rotations, then we do not have a set rotation. There is no set scale as well. So we use transform node. Okay. And to take a transform we can plug this position into translation. So by manipulating this lens, then this cube is moving. I personally do not like a lens because often you do not know the lens of your spine, so it's very difficult to control the start to the end. It's more possible that you use this factor so that start is zero, the end is one. So it's more predictable about the, how you're actually moving your cube. However, just the moving along the spline is not enough. We want also want a good orientation. Uh, I have discussed in my align ULA to vector tutorial. So you basically plot the tangent to vector. Maybe plug that to Z and to rotations. Also, you want to lock on the other axis. Otherwise, you can see these kind of weird rotations along the splines. I do not want to repeat the align ruler to vector tutorials. So I'll just uh, skip the explanation, but basically this is how you do that to ensure there is perfect alignment. So this is basically how you use sample curve node. But this is a very simple and a dumb process. I have no idea why you ever need these things. And in many other cases, this sample curve node won't actually work. So let's move on to the next example. In this example, we have multiple curve lines being instanced. So this is a kind of a simple setup, just to put a random value on the rotations so that we have different splines being instanced while ro being rotated differently. To access all these kind of points, we need a realized instance. And again, the visualization is done by the disparal curve. Okay. And I want multiple cubes each of them should follow this spline differently. Uh, let's uh, reduce this amount of curves. Okay. But the question is how to do that. And this comes to the issue of this sample curve node. The first issue is it does not output geometry. So you have to make geometry from elsewhere. In this case, while we are already instancing these curve lines, we have to instance our cubes as well. Okay. So we use the same setup, linkage, 
and then we come to the issue that we need to do the geometry into the curve. Okay. And finally, we can use the set position because the uh, we can also use the transform, but it does not work for instances. So it's pointless. However, we now see only one cube. Let's use the factor. And if we play this factor, then we can realize this cube is moving. But there is only one cube. You, ha you do have five instances of a cube, but all of them are moving with a single position value. Or what's possible is that you take a random value. So now you separate the different cubes. Okay, so now you solve some part of problem, but the other problem is that each cube, uh, this group of splines will be considered as a whole. So this is zero, and there is only one end of your curves. So just by scoring this factor, you finish one curve, you go to the other curve, and then it goes to the other curve. So all of them are sharing the same factor. There are tons of problems with these things. So generally, sample curve node is so evil. Try not to use that. And the plus, you have to instance your cube again with the same mesh line. So this is kind of a chaotic example that you pro it's not very practical to use. That's why it's more plausible to use the alternative method, which is endpoint selection. So let's go back to the last uh, beginning of the last setup that we are instancing all these curves. So let's take that to five. And we again have this cube. Talking about the end selection node, it's also kind of very confusing. It has a selection, there is no geometry. So you have no idea how to use that maybe. Basic idea is that let's take a join jump. Is that you need to use the point instance or instancing on points, and then you instance the cube. So now you have all this on cube being instanced on this curve. Uh, there is one thing I want you, I want to remind you, is that often in practice this kind of it's not just a curve line it's more kind of resample the curve so that you can add the noise on these curves different paths and so on and then this is the result you're instancing a cube on every point of a curve which is probably not good for following splines that's why you use this endpoint selection so that you only select the start and the end of a curve to instance but if you want to make it um, to follow a spline, then you turn off this start size. Also to remind you how it's how the start size actually affects the curve. But uh, I don't think this is how you should really use that. I mean, it's it's possible, but I do not see a point to do that. Okay, so this is how you use the start and the end points. Uh, one thing I want to remind you is that this end point selection is only working on curves. So any times that you do a curve to points, this node will not work. So if we take a curve to points, and you realize it does not really work, regardless, because it just does not really work. Okay. So let's take this and uh, zero and one. So now we only instance at the end point of a curve, how are we going to move our cubes? Basically, we trim curve. And by trim the curve, you can see this cube is moving. So how am I supposed to align this curve? This, every time it takes four nodes, that's why I created a preset, which is kind of alignment to spline to save the amount of nodes in the process. Okay. So basically, this is kind of idea. There are, however, some issues with this node as well. So now it looks everything is normal. Um, but if we take a random value, 
and plug that to scale so that we create a random scale of our instances and then now if I play this trim curve you can see that our cube is flickering the reason is that if you take a look with the spreadsheet so let's take a view so now we have about 50 points on our curve and the mechanism for this trim curve to work is it actually deletes the points that we have so we reduce the amount of points we change the index or we change the ID then we change the seed that's why random value every time you train it it contains a different seed to solve that we need to capture attribute we need to make sure every splines have a consistent index so we capture attribute change the domain to spline and take the index so this is the way that you work while they have a consistent ID or index for each of them so this is one of the limitation with these methods but it's solvable so it's not a really a limitation it's just uh, some things that you need to pay attention to okay there are another limitation this is uh, something that hasn't been implemented in the nodes yet so basically if you take a curve circle so instead of a curve line, take a curve circle and uh, let's take a random value on the scale maybe a random flow is 0 0.5 and uh, okay so now we have different scale of discount splines and we can resample it much more and now if we play the train you can see it does not really work this is a um, current limitation that trim curve does not work for cyclic spline so you have to take a set uh, set spline cyclic and to make that a cyclic well this is unfortunate but this is how it goes but if you turn that a cyclic then you need to fill this gap by increasing the amount of resample actually it does not work <laughs> so but well I do not know how you actually deal with it uh, wait a second can I actually take that increase? Yes, you resample it before you turn that into a cyclic so that you fill the gap. Okay. So this is how you make it work. What if you want to make this cube to loop? Then you take a math function, take a module, or you take a fraction, yeah. Fraction which, which is module at one, and then you can actually loop the movement of this cube so if we only look at this cube then you can actually see this cube is moving in a cyclic way okay. and overall this is kind of a long tedious process and you capture attributes you turn that a cyclic you resample that and you also trim that and so on and so forth that's why I generally created a kind of preset which is called follow spot okay. this preset is building using similar principle but probably a little bit different uh, which i'm not going to talk about the exact difference but basically it replaces all these kind of nodes that you have probably i will delete all these kind of ones three four five six six nodes and then plug that in between And uh, basically, yeah, you just play around this factor. So normally this factor goes from between zero to one and it stops the movement unless you tick on this movement. And I locked this factor, but you can use another values. So that's 
it can flow infinitely on our curve. So let's plug this. Oh, where is our curve? Oh, we need to join geometry. So basically this is how it has been made. If you want to align the rotation, then you plug the rotation into rotation. If you want to deal with the random scale, then you plug the scales into scale. You can change the scale average. You can change the randomness. So some scale becomes uh, some cubes becomes bigger, other becomes small. You can change the seed as well. There are also other changes that you can make. One is the change the start position. The other is change the speed of variation. So there are all sorts of things that you can play around in your free times. But that's basically the concept. There are lots of settings being made inside. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. But it's definitely a limitation that you have to make it a cyclic. Uh, I think it will be fixed in the future so that you can trim a cyclic spine. But uh, that's another story. And uh, this is probably it for today. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.